Moore said, Photography can convey an awareness or revelation of the marvellous. And I do think there is a kind of spiritual quest in Moore's work. The idea that we can either live in a kind of heaven or a kind of hell, depending on how we perceive the world around us. If you wake up in the morning, for example, and it's snowing, is your first thought, damn, it's going to be hell getting to work? Or is it, wow, how beautiful the trees look covered in snow? Do you see a rubbish bag burst open on the road as an eyesore? Or can you see an amazing arrangement of objects and coloured tins and boxes? Moore saw beauty where others see ugliness. And he recorded these scenes so that we too can learn to become aware of the wondrous possibilities and even the most abject of subjects. And I don't shy away from using the word spiritual, although Moore himself may not have used that word. The ability to see wonder and beauty in what many would regard as boring or drab situations. Whereas admiring a sunset or a mountain view, okay fine, we can all do that. Even Adolf Hitler appreciated a sunset, he even painted them. So can we not try to expand our sensibilities further than that? Perhaps artists should try to challenge accepted notions of what is beautiful, at least try to push those boundaries, rather than simply strengthening conventional ideas. This is classic more. <laughs> it looks so simple and so banal, but in fact it's a hugely complex composition, I think. Verticals, horizontals, diagonals, and everything perfectly balanced, perfectly placed, and it just makes, from, from my perspective, it's just a wonderful composition. There's a German word, unheimlich, which I think translates as uncanny. And that's the, the feeling I get with this image. How strange. It's kind of melancholic and quite austere. And what's, what's going on at the back there with that? It looks like a, a garden shed surrounded by trees. And the, and the balance of the composition with, the, again, the sky and the and the earth, kind of two-thirds, one-third. Very beautiful. It's all about the dog here, isn't it? And it's not just any dog, it has to be that dog. With those legs, that extraordinary neck and head, and that little point of a tail there, and of course the fact that it's a very dark dog. Any other dog, you know, a Labrador or a Poodle, and uh, there's no photo. That horse's head just brushing the line of the telegraph pole. Do you think that's a coincidence? And those two other poles on the ridge of the hill. Take any element away from that and the composition is lost or certainly weakened. And the perfect balance between the sky and the earth. This is another classic Raymond Moore photograph. Anybody brought up in Britain in the 1970s will feel a tremor of uh, terrible recognition about holidays, holiday locations like this one. What what makes it for me, apart from the the, uh, the German Shepherd on the left there that balances out the building on the right, is that uh, Seychelles plate on the on the building there. Can you imagine anything less exotic than this location? I don't know how well known Raymond Moore is. Um, there's a very strange legal problem with his work um, that basically means that all his uh, photographic prints and negatives are locked up in a vault somewhere and they're not allowed to be shown, not allowed to be exhibited, not allowed to be reproduced, other than on the internet, I think. I have no idea what that legal problem is, or what's causing it, or how it can be resolved. But unfortunately, it means that um, there hasn't been an exhibition of Raymond Moore's work, uh, well, for decades now, and so consequently he's becoming less and less well known, which is unfortunate because he was unquestionably one of the great British photographers of the 20th century. 
He studied as a painter, and in fact he graduated from the Royal College of Art in London. Uh, and he later became a lecturer at Trent Polytechnic, a lecturer in, in photography. Uh, but he left in 1978 to become a full-time photographer. He eventually um, went to live in a place called Allenby in Cumbria, which is very close to the Scottish border. It's about as far removed from the bright lights and the swish galleries of London as it's possible to get. And I think he, he, he moved there because he felt he could only find his voice, or rather his vision, as an artist by living in a, in a remote, secluded place. Something I have to say that I'm very sympathetic to because uh, I live myself in the foothills of the Pyrenees uh, in the south of France. Amazingly, there is a film uh, here on YouTube that I discovered uh, very recently. Um, it's about a half an hour film and it's been divided up into three segments of about nine or ten minutes each. The film isn't great quality, I think it must be a copy from a, a VHS tape from the 1980s, but it's perfectly watchable and it's a great source material. I'll put the links to those uh, films down below in the notes.